Hi, Cole here from Storytelling with Data. In my new book, Storytelling with You, readers follow along with me as I plan, create, and prepare to deliver a presentation for an important business meeting. That presentation is what you'll see next. Hope you enjoy. All right, I think we have everyone here. I do see a couple new faces in the group today. I won't go through my full background. I know many people are already familiar with that. We have more important things to talk about today. But just briefly for context, my name is Cole, and I like to think of my team's superpower as our ability to glean actionable insights from robust research that allows us to help brands like Trix thrive, which is an excellent segue into what we're going to be talking about today. The magic is in the macadamia nuts. I'm going to explain what I mean by that and use it to frame up a discussion about where you take the tricks business from here. Specifically, I want to do a couple of things today. I'll start by sharing the findings of the research that we've undertaken, focusing mainly on the taste test and some alternative recipes that we may consider. And I'm going to use that to frame a discussion. And the goal is we leave here today with a decision on what you want to do from here. Now, it has been a long and winding path from a full pricing sensitivity analysis that took us into nuances like the economics of nuts to a deep dive on your top competitors. This actually led us to an unexpected finding when it comes to packaging. We'll talk more about that momentarily. Then, of course, there is the taste test study and our analysis of those results. We collected a ton of data. We have done a massive amount of analysis to get to the recommendation that we have for you today. We've put all of that in the appendix. Happy to go through it with you. We also have curated a story, focusing on the pieces that are going to be pertinent for our discussion today. I'd like to suggest that we start there. Specifically, I want to start with the tricks story. And now I know many are familiar with the background of your flagship product, but there are some parts of the history that are going to be important to have top of mind as we get into our discussion and decision-making process today. So we're going to look at sales over time. We've got millions of dollars here on our y-axis. The Trix Trail Mix was introduced a decade ago in 2012. Strong sales that first year of three and a half million. Sales from there settled in uh, right around three million. But then in 2015, there was a shift. You forged a new supplier relationship that allowed you to switch from macadamia nut pieces to full macadamia nuts, right? Whole nuts. Sales went nuts as a result. That increase represents 45% year-over-year increase in sales. And it wasn't a fluke. Sales remained at that new heightened level, uh, even increasing in the recent years due to growth in the overall snack market. As we project forward, we anticipate continued strong growth. Now, to help put this into perspective, let's layer on your competitor sales data. Notice you did gain market share in that switch from macadamia nut pieces to whole macadamia nuts. I mentioned this before, but we've got a full competitor deep dive that you can find in the appendix. We'll bring to light the pieces that are useful here today. We also, over time, have introduced some spin-off products. Trix Bars and Trix Bites were each introduced in 2016. Sales haven't been as strong as the Trix Trail Mix, but solid and steady. I will just point out that each of those uses macadamia nut pieces. Whereas the Trix Trail Mix has just five simple ingredients. Whole macadamia nuts, cashews, almonds, dried cherries, and dark chocolate chunks. Now, I want to spend just a moment on those whole macadamia nuts. I actually remember a time. This was a couple jobs ago. I was late at the office one night working on a big project, absentmindedly munching. 
And I remember as I reached into the bag and my hand landed on that first whole macadamia nut, that plus the subsequent crunch of that nut made me pause. It brought me fully into the present moment, which is pretty powerful. So it is no surprise to me that whole macadamia nuts are a key component of your Trix trail mix. The problem is macadamia nut prices have surged recently, up nearly 40%. This is due to a widespread blossom blight in one of the major Hawaiian producers. So there's a decision to make. Do you increase price to make up for your increased cost to produce or decrease the cost by maybe looking at an alternative recipe? We did the pricing sensitivity analysis. We do not believe that consumer purchasing patterns are going to support a much higher price point. We believe if you increase your prices enough to make up for that cost increase, you're going to be shifting consumers to your competitors. We checked with you at an earlier check-in point and made the decision that we should focus the rest of our efforts on the other side of this, decreasing cost, specifically by looking at some potential alterations to the recipe for Trix Trail Mix. We'll get to those momentarily. Before we get there, I want to take you into something unexpected around packaging. So as a result of our competitor deep dive, we thought it would be a good idea to do some package testing of the Trix Trail Mix. Your current packaging looks like this. We tested it against an alternative that has a view window where people can see the product directly. And what we found is that view window increases purchase potential uh, by a marked amount. Cost, by the way, is comparable across the different packaging. So we think it's a no-brainer to change up your packaging. Let's shift next, though, to the taste test and our analysis of those results. So we tested the original mix against two alternative mixes. Just as a reminder, that original mix includes whole macadamia nuts, almonds, cashews, dried cherries, and dark chocolate chunks. Alternative A we eliminated the macadamia nuts, increased the almonds to make up for that, and also added dried apricots. In alternative B, we replaced the macadamia nuts with hazelnuts. Also introduced flaked coconut, and the rest of the ingredients remained unchanged. So we'd been snacking on these. We're finding them quite delicious, and we're curious to see what consumers would think. Unfortunately, our sentiment was not shared broadly. The original mix performs best overall. Specifically, on a liking scale of one to nine, the original mix scores 8.1, which is actually quite a high score. Just to put a bit more context around that, we asked people a simple question. How much do you like the sample? People were assessing that on a nine-point hedonic scale, ranging from dislike extremely at one end to like extremely at the other. Here's that 8.1 that reflects the overall mix that I mentioned. Alternatives A and B both scoring lower than that. I'm going to do something a little bit different next. I'm going to replace the ends of these bars with circles. I do that simply so I can compress everything onto a single line and get some space for the additional elements that we assessed. Appearance, texture, taste. Let's focus first on those for the original mix, those, those dark blue circles. Here's what that looks like. Again, these are very high scores. I'm going to layer on the alternatives. It gets a little messy here, but the thing to recognize is that the bright blue in all cases appear to the left of the dark blue. So these are the alternative scoring lower across the various dimensions. There's still a lot we can learn here. Next, let's look at these alternatives one by one. So we'll start with alternative A. So recall, this is the mix that increases almonds and adds dried apricots. We see there's some variance across the liking, scoring lower for appearance and texture. We have another level of data that we can dig into to better understand this. So in addition to overall liking, we also asked our taste testers to rate the level of various components. They could tell us there was too little, it was just about right, or that there was too much. 
and put the data up there. Now, really what we're looking for here are the gray portions of those bars to be big. That's the part that's representing those saying the mix is just about right for the given dimension. We're also looking for balance across the blue ends of those bars, which would tell us that roughly the same proportion of people are indicating there's too little as are indicating too much. So no clear directionality for change. Flipping that around, we can look for areas of imbalance that can give us some interesting insight. For example, here I'll highlight the areas of imbalance with alternative A. So notice a chunk of people said there was too much fruit, not enough crunch, too much chew. All of these things point to the apricots throwing the mix out of balance. So we don't think this is going to be a good alternative. Let's take a look at alternative B. So remember, this is where we replace the macadamia nuts with hazelnuts and also introduce flaked coconut. Here are our overall liking scores. Notice taste is quite low. Actually, we were ready to throw this one out the window at this point, but then we started to see something interesting when we looked more closely at some of the additional data. Let's take a look at that just about right picture again. These great bars are big. There is great balance going on in alternative B across a number of dimensions. So this was something that we wanted to keep digging into. One thing that was confusing to us, though, is that a chunk of people said that the mix was too salty. This was counterintuitive. Neither the hazelnuts or the flaked coconut should have added any measurable increase in salt flavor. But this clearly meant something was off. So we turned to some additional data that we collected where we had people rate individual ingredients. That looks like this. So now we're back on that overall liking picture, ranging from dislike extremely at the left to like extremely at the right. Only this time, we're asking people to assess individual ingredients. Put the data up there. It's macadamia nuts up at the top. No surprise there, right? It's magical. People love them. We knew that. What we didn't know is that people hate hazelnuts. Uh, and actually, that's the wrong language, and the middle-of-the-road average is misleading as well. Turns out hazelnuts are very polarizing. People either love them or really <laughs> dislike them. So hazelnuts are not going to be a good replacement for macadamia nuts. We also noticed something new in this view of the data, which is people really like coconut. I'm going to let you read a verbatim comment that sums up an idea that we'd been having as well. So this was an idea that was coming up in our verbatim quotes that we were reading from taste testers again and again. And it's one that we had started to have from what we'd seen in the data as well. Our recommendation is... Don't eliminate the macadamia nuts, reduce them. Also add in flaked coconut. As we saw, people love the coconut and it really brings things into balance in a great way. Also can make up for any crunch that gets lost by the reduction of the macadamia nuts. People are going to go nuts. So the way we see it, you have three options. And which you pursue is going to depend on what's more important, consumer sentiment or cost, also your tolerance for risk. You can go with option one, raise the price, though as we've discussed, we think that's risky. Option two, we think you could be successful going directly to market with this new alternative mix. Decrease the macadamia nuts, introduced flake coconut without retesting. However, if your risk tolerance is low and if time and money aren't a huge concern, we can certainly go with option three and fully vet this new alternative mix. In any case, we strongly believe that the magic is in the macadamia nuts and maybe in the coconut too.
That presentation generated active discussion among my client group at NOSH. They agreed with our recommendation to change the product packaging. The only concern related to that was about existing inventory. So they decided to work through that first and then change to the new packaging that introduced the view window. There was also quite the debate about the trail mix recipe. Part of the group advocated reducing macadamia nuts and introducing coconut as we recommended. Others, however, were understandably hesitant to bring an untested product to market. In the end, we decided on a speedy round of taste tests that gave everyone the confidence to move forward with our recommendation. In related great news, Nosh has already booked two more major projects with my team. Would you like to see the foundation for that successful scenario? That's what you'll find in my new book, Storytelling with You. Plan, create, and deliver a stellar presentation. I hope you enjoyed seeing how it all came together into that final presentation. If you haven't yet added it to your library, I invite you to visit storytellingwithyou.com. You can get sample content and order your copy today. Here's to your next presentation. I hope it's stellar. Thank you.